Now, on the 30th of September this year, Steve Wright signed off from his final afternoon show on Radio 2 after 23 years. Most of all, I want to say thank you to you for listening from the bottom of my heart. If you've listened at any time over the past 23 years, me and the team don't really quite know how to thank you enough. And it goes without saying that I love you. And we've shed a few tears over the past few weeks. Well, Steve will continue to present his Sunday morning show and taking his place on weekday afternoons is Scott Mills, who's come directly from Radio 1. I'm so excited. This is Scott Mills and this is my brand new weekday afternoon show. Scott Mills, Radio 2. Here we go. A month into the new show and many, many of you have been in touch to tell us what you think. Hi, my name is Pete Keyes from Newquay. I'm 69 years old and I've been listening to Steve since my university days on and off. The show is great. It's well crafted. It's got everything. It's got music. It's got humour, really interesting interviews. And the oldie slot is great also because it just shakes up the Radio 2 playlist a little bit. So I was absolutely amazed and I've got to say really disappointed when uh, I heard that the show was being cancelled. I do realise that shows can't go on forever. I'm not against change, but if you are going to change something, please replace it with something of at least equal quality, not just a DJ playing records. Hello, Christine Ward here. Why was Steve Wright axed recently when his show was so popular? Like Simon Mayo. Is it because there's some ageism going on? It seems they're trying to change Radio 2 into Radio 1. That's not what people want. People migrate to certain stations at certain times in their lives. I migrated to Radio 2 in my 30s because I no longer enjoyed Radio 1. Really miss you guys. Steve White. I just wanted to say how disappointed I am by the music that is being played on the new afternoon show on Radio 2. I have nothing against Scott Mills, but why is the music now so different in the afternoons from the music played in the mornings? I realise that the station needs to evolve, but this show is so blatantly aimed at Scott's former Radio 1 listeners. I am not against 90s and 2000s music, and I enjoy your new music playlist, but why the need for all this dance music? Well, I'm delighted to say that Helen Thomas, the head of Radio 2, joins me. Helen, thank you so much for being here and feedback. Um, Managing change is always a challenge. Tell me how you approach this one. Well, it is a challenge. Um, You look at the particular part of the day, you look at what the audience are doing at that time and what mood they might be in, and then you start to think about how we could soundtrack that or match the mood. Now, you chose to bring Scott Mills across from Radio 1. Obviously, he had a big following there in an afternoon show. A lot of listeners are saying that the shift in the music playlists is aimed at younger audiences. And I wonder if it was your intention to entice those Radio 1 listeners across to the new show. Well, bringing Scott Mills in was really about bringing in a multi-award winning broadcaster who has over 30 years experience presenting radio shows and for the last five years or so Scott has been doing bits and pieces for us on Radio 2. He's been doing bank holiday specials and covering for other presenters when they're on and Of course, I'm always looking to broaden the appeal of Radio 2, but I would never do that at the expense of our existing listeners. The problem is that a lot of your existing listeners are telling us that actually they do feel it's at their expense because they say that now these afternoon playlists uh, include a lot of stuff from the 90s and from the noughties and it's just not music that they enjoy and it's not the music that Steve Wright was playing. And... I get a lot of feedback from listeners telling me that they're enjoying the range of music that they hear in the afternoons and right across the radio station. So, um, you know, on Radio 2, we play the broadest mix of music you will hear anywhere, up to 15,000 tracks each year. And we play music 
from the 60s onwards. That's seven decades of music. I myself have heard uh, Nina Simone and Stevie Wonder and Queen on Scott Show specifically. I mean, we also have, for those who wish to listen specifically to music from their youth, we have the Sands of the 60s with Tony Blackburn. We have Sands of the 70s with Johnny Walker. These programmes are available on BBC Sounds for people to listen to at any time. So how will you measure success then over time? Of course, it's too early to look at Scott Mills listening figures yet. But when they do come out, if you do notice that older listeners or percentage of listeners have left, will that give you pause? Success for us is measured in many ways. You know, it's about how long people are listening for. It's about how many people are listening. But, you know, time and time again, we are told by our listeners that just because they are a certain age, it doesn't mean they don't want to hear new music. No, Steve Wright, uh, when he was leaving, said, my friend and boss, Helen Thomas, said that she wanted to do something different in the afternoon. So that must have been tough for you to sit down with him. I wonder how you approached it. Well, um, we just had a really honest conversation. And as Steve recognised, he'd been doing that slot for 23 years and All radio stations will evolve, you know, and the fact that he has chosen to stay with Radio 2 and continue to make programmes for us, I think is testament to what a fantastic guy he is. But he's still a huge part of the Radio 2 family. He's still there every Sunday doing brilliant business for us with love songs. And he's been hosting a range of specials since the afternoon show came to an end. He did the debut album chart for National Album Day, the 70th anniversary of the chart. He did some special programming and he's got two really big shows for Christmas as well. You, I know, were part of another major shift that was when Sir Terry Wogan retired and and Chris Evans took over. Does this feel similar in terms of the scale and the the kind of feedback that you're getting from your listeners? Yeah, I mean, our listeners really love Radio 2. You know, it's kind of woven into their lives. And they told us this during the pandemic, but we hear it all the time. And... Yeah, I think a change in daytime radio too is pretty seismic. As a veteran of that Sir Terry Wogan, Chris Evans change, I wonder what advice you were able to give to Scott Mills and to his producer about taking this on. I mean, they are big boots to fill. And although Scott is a very established broadcaster, it still can't be easy to know that there are a lot of traditional fans of Steve Wright out there who maybe aren't that comfortable with the change. <laughs> I remember really clearly having having launched two daytime shows on Radio 2 myself. I know how passionately the listeners care. What I certainly found when I personally was launching new daytime shows was people getting in touch after about six weeks saying... I was somebody who really wasn't happy about this change. I didn't like it when this show first came on. But you know what? You're all right. (laughs) (laughs) And Scott Mills (laughs) is four weeks in. Are you hoping that in two weeks' time you're going to start getting those kind of emails? Well, we're already getting them, Mm. Andrea. We already are. There are a lot of people who are really enjoying the new sound to Radio 2 in the afternoons. And we are thrilled with what Scott and his team are doing. Helen Thomas, thank you very much indeed. And you can listen to Scott Mills' show on Radio 2 on weekdays between 2 and 4 and, of course, on BBC Science.